So that was Vexed Up by Jacob... Oh, that was Vexed Up by Jacob James. Uh, what brought that song to life, Jacob? Um, I was originally inspired by a portion of a Neil Young song called um, Down by the River. Um, and there was a certain area of that song that I found to be really melodic, and I really wanted to sample it. So it's kind of a really sampled-based song. So I sampled that, and then I also ended up sampling... Um, a Pink Floyd guitar solo towards the end of the track. So it's really sample-based. That's how that track came to life. Awesome. What uh, Did you work on this project solo, or was there anybody else helping you out? This one was mostly a solo effort. Um, I, I wrote and produced it all by myself. Um, some of my other songs I had um, co-writers, but this one was all written by me. Fantastic. Now, the next song we have coming up is called Everything's a Lie. Could you give a background on this song before you play it? Yeah, um, this song I released on my debut album, and I also released it as a single before. Um, it was um, kind of, I was trying to write like a true blue pop hit. Um, so I, I guess this kind of melody, which is the chorus, was what like kind of repeating itself in my head for a solid month. And I said, why, why don't I just um, write this out and see where it goes, so... Uh, yeah, and then I ended up going to a professional studio to get this one recorded and uh, released it. So, yeah, that's that's everything's a lot. All right. The first song we couldn't play in full because of uh, lyric issues with swearing on the radio, but this song you'll get to hear in full. Here's Everything's a Lie by Jacob James. Uh, what? If you really want to lead the American dream, you can run away with me. We can just up and leave. If you live in the Lord, we can just up and go. But I think you should know.
All right, so that was, oh, that was everything is a lie. And that is, and that is Jacob's song Stuck, which we will play in a few minutes. So, Jacob, what's the uh, context of everything's a lie? What does everything is a lie even mean? Yeah, well, um, I guess I, I started writing that song in middle school, and I was still kind of coming into my own as an artist, especially as a lyricist. Um, so I think my intention with naming the song Everything's a Lie and making that the hook of the song was to catch people's eye um, and really kind of, I guess, be edgy for lack of a better uh, description. Um, yeah, so I guess it was mostly like a lyrical coming of my own, and it's kind of just about uh, a small town life and a desire to get away from that. Oh. Awesome. So how does small town life play into this? Um, the, like Especially in the verse, like um, we can just up and go kind of this desire to abandon a life of um, normality um, and what is expected um, and instead go to a life of excitement. Radical. Yeah, most, yeah. So this next song is called In My Head. What's the background for this song? This was the first song I, um, I, I released. Uh, I was like 13 when I wrote and recorded the song. I also took this to a producer to get it produced. Um, it was kind of during that whole phase of indie folk, like pop folk, like Mumford and & Sons, and I was really inspired by that for this song. So, you know, that, that um, folky guitar, all that good stuff. All right. So... What's coming up is In My Head by Jacob James. Now the CD player is making weird noises, so this song will come up. There it goes. The ship will sail away Sail into yesterday And this tune will play over in my head It wasn't worth a stay We traveled to the bay and moved on It doesn't matter anyway Life will go on and on
That was stu that was in my head by Jacob James. So you mentioned before the song played, Jacob, that this song was made with the help of a producer. What was that like? Uh, that was an awesome experience, and it, uh, I kind of, from that experience, learned that what I wanted to do primarily with my career is music production. Um, and being with him and like um, watching him work on the songs, uh, watching the process happen, it was kind of. I mean, it was pretty magical. Um, so it was almost like like getting a, a glimpse into the creative process of actual professional professional songs. So I love that very much. How old were you again back when you made the song? In my head, I was um, I was thirteen. So you can tell my voice was still hadn't really dropped. <laughs> so you're eighteen now, right? I'm 18 now, yeah. So you've had five years of experience making these pop songs, or folk songs, or punk songs, or whatever genre you do. That's correct, yeah. That's correct. How has your outlook on this changed, starting right now, since it was back when you made In My Head? Yeah, I mean, I guess back then, I still hadn't decided what I wanted to do in terms of genre, and what my genre was as a musician. So you can tell, like, the songs from back then, they were either, like, folk or they were pop or they were punk. You know, like, most of them were pretty poppy, but they were all over the place, really. Um, now, you know, I've, I've tried to kind of narrow my scope. And, um, yeah, I guess that's why they're all kind of different styles. And I guess growing ha has allowed me, you know, that, that period of five years has allowed me to focus and narrow my scope, for sure. Exactly, yeah. Speaking of genres, what genre is the song we're about to hear? Stuck. Stuck's pop punk, I guess. Like, you know, inspired by Green Day, Blink-182 type, type of stuff. Definitely still poppy, though. All right, let's hear it. I feel rejected 
that was Stuck by Jacob James. So there was a, more, a lot more of a wall of sound in that song than there was in In My Head or Everything's Alive. That's not what we want. That's going to happen later. So, not my smoothest. This is my first broadcast, folks. Please have some, some, some sympathy. I would appreciate it. All right, so Jacob, uh, what was that wall of sound uh, different production style like? Where did that come from? Well, yeah, we were going for a, a rockier sound, um, and we had we had actually a live drummer, uh, like a sessionist drummer come in, and Ooh. that really made a world of difference. Like if you have a, a sessionist drummer rather than like a lot of my, my drums on most of my songs are actually just electronic MIDI drums, but we had a, an actual drum player in, and just that live energy adds a completely different element to the song sonically. And um, also, I mean, just those guitars, they're really well produced. I mean, you got to give props to the producer I was working with at the time. Definitely. Who was that producer? His name is Gowan Matthews. Um, I haven't worked with him in a while, but he was awesome. Gowan Matthews. If any of you out there are looking for a producer, that's your man. Yep. So, this next. Also, I'd like to ask about the lyrics of the song. What was the thought process behind that? Um, I'd say, like, of of all of my older songs, I guess this one is is among, in terms of lyrical content, the one that I'm more proud of. Definitely. Um, obviously, I feel like I've grown since then in terms of lyrical content, but it's it's you know I'm happy with that. Um, it's kind of a coming of age song, uh, and it's about longing for a simpler, you know, your simpler days of childhood, and kind of lamenting over teenage your teenage years it's, it's pretty melodramatic but I, I like incorporated some metaphors to kind of you know make it a little more lyrical fantastic so the next song that's coming up is called three o'clock what makes this song different from the ones we've heard before and the ones we're going to hear uh so three o'clock was um i the only con contribution i had to the track was producing it um is actually sung completely by a lady named Amalia Lugo, and she's fantastic. And I've, I'd worked with her before, and she, and um, I asked her to appear on my album as kind of a feature artist, and I had her sing the whole song, and she had written this song. Um, and she had written lyrics and a, a vague melody, so I kind of put it to um, a sonic track, and it, it actually it's one of my favorites. Let's hear it then. Three o'clock, written and sung by Amalia Lugo, produced by Jacob James.
think of you. So that was three o'clock, written and performed by Amalia Lugo, produced by Jacob James. Jacob, what was it like producing a song instead of writing and performing it? Um, it was really important for me because it, it kind of proved to me that that's something that I really wanted to do as a career. And it's what I'm studying right now in college, actually, um, audio engineering. Um, and so getting to work with such a fantastic singer and also, frankly, a great songwriter, too, was a, a great uh, opportunity. And um, certainly similar in collaboration with when I was collaborating with a producer, except this time I was filling that role. And it, and it has a lot. It comes with a lot of um, creative uh, burden, but it's all—it's also just a great time. So, so you said you were majoring in audio engineering. Yeah, that's correct. Has this song done anything other than inspiring you? To that sort of has helped you out in that major. You mean that song that just played? Has that inspired me? Uh, what about it? just like other than the process? What did you learn from it that added to your audio engineering capabilities? Um how important it is to feed the creativity of your artist and um it's it's all collaboration even when it's a professional when it's in a professional environment professional audio engineering it's all about creatively collaborating um and you have to you have to be on the same creative wavelength as the artist you're working with so it's a skill level that you have to develop and i'm still working on so all right this next song is called Mr. Probability. What's the backstory for this one? Um, just um, a song I wrote in middle school as well, maybe early high school. Um, lyrically, uh, <clears throat> kind of about the unpredictability of life and, and uh, questioning, like, like wondering where you're going to be, where you're going to be in the future, whether it's the near or the far future, and really asking um, whoever or whatever's in charge of that. You know, it's a question of, is there fate? Or is it free will? Kind of what that song's about. Sounds pretty deep. Let's hear it. Mr. Probability by Jacob James.
So that was Mr. Probability with the sudden ending leading up into our very last song, which you'll hear in just a few moments if you stay tuned. So, Jacob, I noticed that the bass and the piano, especially the bass, were really powerful on that track. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Uh, I just got to give props to the Beatles. I mean, uh, the bass... Bass composition for the Beatles has always been inspiring to me. I mean, pretty much all aspects of Beatle composition have been inspiring. And um, bass and and uh, piano have always been just the classic combination. You can really do a lot with that. So, I mean, the pianos are long notes. So if you have the bass kind of do a lot more movement than you would normally have, it can make for some pretty good dynamic dynamics in the song. So that would yeah. definitely explain why it didn't feel slow, even though it. Uh, the piano was moving super slowly and super repetitively. Yeah. Uh, have the Beatles influenced your other work? or? Oh, totally. I mean, I grew up on the Beatles. I mean, who hasn't, right? Yeah, Beatles True. are just incredible pop artists, so totally. So the next song we're going to play is called Broken Mirror. This is the title of your album, right? That's correct. And this is the first track on that album? Yeah, it's the opening track and the title track. What it's meant to kind of uh, hook in the audience, grab attention. All right, let's see if this hook works. Broken Mirror, Jacob James. Falling through the atmosphere. Nothing to see, cause nothing's here. Suddenly the truth is clear That was Broken Mirror by Jacob James. So, Jake, while this song was playing, we were talking a lot about influences. Could you sort of uh, let the people know what inspired you to create these songs? Um, I mean, they're just I love music, so there's so many artists that I could think of. Um, on that particular song that just played, lyrically, I was, or at least in terms of the, the delivery of uh, the lyrics, I was inspired by Kurt Cobain's melody writing and his uh, delivery um, because I think he's got that super awesome gritty voice and obviously didn't do him any justice, but like, he's a super huge influence. Also, um, lyrically inspired by writers like Bob Dylan and, and whatnot. So a lot of, a lot of influences for sure. Yeah, we're, we're mentioning people like the Beatles, Bob Dylan, Kurt Cobain. But you're also talking how you're inspired by a lot more niche artists. Who are some of those? Um, I mean, I could get into some, some rock bands that I really like. I wouldn't quite describe Radiohead as niche, but, um, definitely one of my favorites. Um, Frank Ocean is a great R&B artist that I'm really into. Um, 
and like if you really want to get niche with it like there's this one rap group that i love that it's pretty inspiring for my more recent output and that's death grips um that's like a pretty niche band for sure death grips so your yeah. album is called broken mirror and this is the first track on it what led to the creation of this album um i really thought that that i should put my effort into a full-length debut project and it was pretty hard because you know normally you come out with an ep or a couple you know singles but i i thought like why why not just um put a lot of pour a lot of my time into a, an album of you know 40 minute 40 minute long album um so i i kind of wanted to do most of the production myself with the exception of the the three singles that were released before and that's everything's a lie stuck and um in my head so it was it was a huge undertaking and it took me years to actually make and i started when i was 13 and i released it when i was like 16. wow a massive undertaking for sure so we have one more song before you go this song is not on the album it's called rio what uh this is your chance to hype up the crowd what is so awesome about the song and what is so awesome about your work that people should look you up after this episode is completed well i think rio I, i'm really going for a, a pop sound on rio and contemporary sound and it's my newest song um and i think it's it's really catchy in my opinion so it's probably my most catchy song um and you should also look look up the music video for Rio too because I just released it and I'm working with a fantastic video producer his name is Griffin Haunty and he's my roommate here in college um, so if you get the chance everyone listening please look up the music video for Rio by Jacob James and it's my new single so yeah I, I've seen that video and it's fantastic one uh, thank you. one take of just awesome visual effects seems thank like a you. much higher budget than I'm sure the indie production was yeah he's I mean, this guy I'm working with, he's incredible. Definitely check out his stuff, too. A great, great visual artist, for sure. All right. Before you go, where can people find your work? Um, I'm on pretty much any streaming service, Apple Music, Spotify. You can still buy my music on iTunes, if you're willing. Um, but Jacob James is my artist name. Um, you can also find me on YouTube if you're not willing to you know, subscribe to any streaming service or SoundCloud. So I'm out there. All right. And it would be gr it was great to have you here. Thank you for being the very first guest on Spotlight. And thank, thank you. you thank you so much for allowing me to to be on. I'm glad I'm honored to be your first guest. So. I'm on I'm honored to be your first host. And or for you to be the first person as I'm a host. This is You're great. also my first host. I've never been on radio before, so. Big That's moment. Awesome. You got got the spotlight on you now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So for the very last song of the hour, or very last song of this program, before we switch to more general work and some local pieces, so stay tuned. Here is Jacob James's new single, Rio. Like me. 
It's not, I cannot reach you anymore.